Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we are going to be doing a cool thing. I'm a professional handicapper, and if you don't know what that is, what happens is people pay me to give them bets. It's at bpowpicks.com. Comment in the section, comment section. I can get you there in for free. Last year, I was the best on the site, over 600 units, which is a, a betting way of saying a lot of money. People made a lot of money, but one of the on one of the sites that I go, Mike, we call them bookies in the industry. Um, it gave us uh, some futures. It gave me some futures. Gave everybody futures, and those future futures are like what's going to happen at the end of the season. For instance, who's going to win the Stanley Cup? You can bet on that. But what it is is how many points each team are going to get at the end of the year. And you go over or under that number. They give you a number and you pick over or under that number. And you are going to help me do that because you're going to comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about either with your team or all the teams or what have you. After subbing up to the channel, of course, don't you know, right? I only need 45 for a thousand. And then the dollar dollar bills start coming in. Like, yeah. So this is all part of Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all four major sports and the teams within those sports, you'll like the All Sports Network. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And of course, the Pearl of Wisdom Show. It's coming hockey time. And Peyton on the radio, Off the Wall John and I will be doing live streams together. you got to be part of it, man. It's going to be so cool. It is awesome. Okay. So, let's get started, shall we? And the first one we're looking at is the Anaheim Ducks. And as you can see, the over-under here is 78%. Last year it opened at seven or 78 and a half points last year it opened at 70 and a half and they finished with 76 points this year so anaheim ducks 78 now they've done well they've uh improved by getting ryan strom frank vetrano uh i you know i like those moves no doubt about that john klingberg <clears throat> is a good move it gives them a lot of the same on defense, though. That's the one thing that I have an issue about as well. But it does fill out the roster. And on paper, you got to say, well, you know, they got to go up in the standings because, you know, they got better this year. The problem is everybody got better. You know, Los Angeles got better. Uh, Vancouver, I think, will be better in a full season there with uh, Boudreaux. Um, Seattle got a couple really good wingers there to add to their team and Edmonton with the full season with Woodcroft and, uh, hopefully better goaltending could be better. So at 78 and a half, I'm going to say that I'm still going to go on the under here with Anaheim. And the funny thing is, is I do think they're a better team than last year. And I do think they're going on the right trajectory. And I probably won't give this pick to my clients because I could just as well see. I could just as well see Anaheim actually doing. I mean, Zegers goes off. Terry goes off. You know, uh, Mason McTavish can go off. It's just a very, I love Isaac Lundestrom. I love the Dmitry Kulikov pickup. I like everything they did. It's just. Everybody did well, and it's a very young team. Last year, they tailed off in the second half, mostly because this is a. It takes a while for your for a player's body to get used to an eighty-two game schedule. This could be the year Trevor Zegris does get used to that. This could be the year that a lot of these guys do do that. But I have to see it, and for with the improvements already in their division by other teams, I'm going slightly to the under here. Tell me what you guys think, Anaheim fans. Over or under on that. Next, Arizona Coyote. And uh, 67 and a half points is the over 
under uh, for them. Last year, it opened at 68 and a half and they finished with 57. So we got to believe that Arizona is going to be able to pick up 10 more points than they did last year based on the lineup that they have right now. Now, there are a few things I will say about Arizona. Last year, they were like a grab bag first uh, the first 10 games. Like, they were a grab bag of players that were just thrown all together. They weren't really a team. And they struggled heavily right out of the gate, which makes sense. This year, I'm a huge fan of Turney as a coach. And most of the a lot of these players have played with each other a lot more than than it was last year. There, this team is more like a team than it was last year. But there was a lot of changes. Troy Stetcher comes in. He's new. Nemeth and Brown, which I don't even think Nemeth is going to get the playing time there, honestly. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, Moser. But, um, you know, Keller, Hayton, and Schmaltz, they've kind of played together the, through the whole time anyways. Um, Smith came in halfway through the year. So a lot of these guys are going to be I, – I don't think it's going to be as bad pr- from the beginning. Carl Bomelka also – uh, and all their goaltending had never played with the defense in front of them and everything like that. But so, and Turney was a new coach. So all of those things considered, I think they're going to have a better start than last year. The problem is just about everybody in their division got better, uh, except for Chicago and Winnipeg. The question is, are they going to be over six and 67 and a half points? And I think this is kind of the total. I think this is going to be a better team, believe it or not, than it was last year, which is probably not a good thing because they want to be last if they can. I just think with coaches, with attorneys coaching, they'll find ways to win games that you wouldn't think that they would. Not to mention Carl Bamelka goes off and stops 50 shots and stuff like that. Uh, so... I'm going to go slightly to the under, like something like 65 points here, but I'm probably not going to put in anything for this uh, because I don't like betting against amazing coaches like Turney. You guys in Arizona, be happy. You've got a great coach there for the future in uh, Turney, no doubt about that. Okay, next. Boston Bruins and... Over under is 95 and a half. Opened at 103 last year and finished with 107 points. And look at how much they're dropping them this year. Looking for a big drop with, uh, and the reason why that being, of course, is no Marshawn to start the season, no McAvoy to start the season, no Grizzly to start the season. Uh, You bring in Bergeron and David Krejci. Krejci last year, in uh, the Czech League was less than a point a game. And I'm sorry, boys and girls, that is not good for a Czech League. The Czech League is not, is like, is one of the lower leagues in Europe, really. You should be crushing that league if you're playing. I'm a little concerned about that. Now, I have a feeling he probably took it easy there and he thought he was retiring, he's just having fun. And when he decided to come back to Boston, he probably got into the gym and he got himself in the best shape possible to do this run with uh, Boston. And I never like to leave to to put Boston. Uh, I never like to undersell Boston, but I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it. This is I'm talking about more than a twelve point game drop. It's just Detroit. Got way better. It's going to be a dogfight in this division. Detroit, Ottawa, uh, Toronto. You're not going to be able to pick up easy points any like you did last year against uh, the Mo- Montreal. Maybe yeah, but Detroit and Ottawa are not easy points anymore. And I think they're going to take more points from Boston than they did before. And I think they're going to struggle early. I think it's very possible that Boston doesn't even make the playoffs this year. So I'm going to go with the under on this one. Uh, Under 95 and a half. I know I probably – Boston fans are usually fairly rational, and I have a feeling that they'll probably agree. I 
I don't like to undersell Bergeron, I you know, Pasternak and all those guys. And when Marshawn and them come back, they could just go off. And I probably won't put this in as a pick for my clients, but um, comment in the comment section, Boston fans, tell me what you think. Over or under 95 and a half for the Boston Bruins. Make sure you're subbing up to the channel. Comment in the YouTube, comment on my on my uh, video there. All right, next. Buffalo Sabres. And uh, la last year it opened at 96 and a half. And this year, or sorry, 90, 69 and a half. Uh, finished with 75. This year they have it at 77 and a half. And I like Buffalo's team. No doubt about that. I, I really like Buffalo's team. Uh, I, that being said, again, just like I said, and, and I didn't even mention Buffalo here when talking about Boston, this is going to be a tough team to beat. They're, I think this is going to be the tightest division, and which is weird because they it was pretty much a blowout last year. Most of the teams were out of it by the first half of the season. But this year, you got a full Jack, a full season of Jack Quinn, who looked really good when he did play. Now, he's only 20 years old. He's probably going to start out strong and then fade. Uh, you got Tage Thompson just went off. But mostly, what I the thing that I love about this team is the defense. Samuelson, Darlene, Power, Yoki, Haru, Bryson, and Lyabushkin is a really good, solid defense. And the next question mark I have is Eric Comrie, of course. Uh, a lot of people are very high on Eric Comrie. And I mean, a lot of people. I am. He had a great year last year. I thought it was a good roll the dice play on Eric Comrie to see if he can manage to be a number one. He's 27 years old. He's been in the league for a while. He's worked his way up. The thing is, it's just it's his first time being a number one. I love the coaching of Granado. And I want to go on the over here with Buffalo, mostly because I just like their team at 77 and a half points. And they finished with 75 last year. You got to figure they're going to be over here. I got to go with the over. I think they're probably in the 80 point range, somewhere around there. What do you think Buffalo Sabres fans? The, uh, do you agree with me that they will be over 77 and a half? I'm on the, on the fence. Tell me why, too. Make sure you tell me why you think that they will be. Next, Calgary Flames, over, under, one and a half. One, 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 one and a half. And, uh, Last year, they were opened at 90 and a half and finished with 111. Now, the question is, is this team going to be able to produce like they did last year? This is one of the most interesting ones out of all the, out of all the teams, to tell you the honest truth, because of the big changes here with Huberto uh, uh, coming in, in in replace of Kachuk and, of course, Kadri coming in in replace of Goudreau or however you wish to do it. I guess Huberto Goudreau makes more sense. Um, I don't think Kadri is going to do as well as he did last year. I, I, I really don't. I especially play, you know, I love Mangio Pani, no doubt about it, but he doesn't have the same protection he had last year. People would focus on McKinnon last year and kind of leave him alone. You know, he didn't get, I think he's going to get a lot more attention this year. Than he did last year, and Elias Lindholm and Huberto will, will they'll still get their attention, no doubt about that. But teams will split it up a lot more with Kadri and Manjapani. So I think he's definitely gonna. I think he's probably gonna see a drop off there. I love their defense with Hannafin Anderson. Uh, getting Uyghur was unbelievable. That's a top two pairing defenseman. I I got to admit they haven't signed him up yet, but. 
Uh, I thought that was a great move. I love, 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 love. I really love their defense. And Jacob Marstrom is solid, of course, in goal. But I think their offense is going to drop. And because this division has gotten so much better than it did last year, they had 111 points, and this is 101. Man, it feels like the number to me. It feels like the number, right around 101. So I definitely won't be giving this to clients. But I think I'm going to go under. I think I'm going to go slightly under. Calgary fan, Flames fans, let me know what you think. I don't think you're going to have as good of a year last year. Tell me in the comment section what you think about I'm sure Calgary Flames are fans. You're crazy. Uh, you know, Huberto is blah, 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 blah. This team hasn't played together. You know, Huberto, uh, it's going to take a while for this team to mesh. So I, I could see some struggles early and then have to work themselves out of it after. Where last year was pretty consistent all the way through. Um, that being said, again, I mean, just like last year, Sutter is the biggest tonic in all of this. He's an amazing coach, an elite coach, one of the best coaches of all time. And if anybody can get it done, it's certainly Sutter. So uh, for that reason, I probably should be putting them over. But uh, it's a tough one. It's right on the money for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes over under 103. Opened at 96 last year, and they finished with 116 points. To me, this is pretty simple. It's over. Uh, over, I, I don't know why they think they're going to drop 10 points in the standings because Pacioretty got injured. This team's basically the same as it was last year. Uh, Jesper Kokaniemi, to, instead of Tro, I think is going to probably have a breakout year this year. Trocek isn't that huge of a loss. Uh, the question is whether Marty Nietzsche uh, will be able to rebound off their kind of a meh season, but I love the pickup of Paul Stastny. And Brent Burns and, and Jacob Slavin. I, I don't know. Did Brent Burns is like, does he ever age? He, he doesn't seem to age. Um, and if he gets to play with a defensive guy like Slavin, I, this is going to be so pretty to watch. And then you've got Shea and Pesci. The, that top four is absolutely fantastic. It really comes down to the, as long as the goaltending doesn't get injured together, especially between Anderson and Ranta. Because, and even then, they still have a strong young goaltender to come up as well. Uh, they have depth throughout their organization to take on uh, some injuries that may happen throughout the year. I think this team is just set up to be possibly President's Trophy. So tell me what you think, Carolina fans. I'm going on the over here for sure. Next, the Chicago Blackhawks, and uh, this one should be pretty easy either. Whatever they say, I'm going under. 67 and a half. Uh, I had the under yeah, last year too. Clients made a good money amount of money last year off of that Chicago pick. I, I don't know why they had them so high, but uh, this year, at, even at 67, that much of a drop. I just don't see this team having the will to win too many time, too many games this year, uh, let alone the skill. They uh, Taze and Kane, are, they're, it's going to be hanging over everybody's head that they're, they're both probably going to be traded. Um, I know Taze and, Taze and Kane will always have the heart to play. I, that's what people say, but Kane is diabol has become diabolically bad defensively. And nobody wants to talk about it because he's iconic in the United States, but he has. I'm sorry. The guy just doesn't have the heart in him anymore. He's got to go somewhere else. With all the stuff that happened in Chicago, it's it's pretty tough on him. Uh, and after the see of Domi and Tyler Johnson, uh, that, that lineup's going to get absolutely ruined. Ruined. It's not going to be pretty, man. Peter Morazic as your – this could be one of the – I think Arizona is better than Chicago. There, There's nothing in here that tells me this team's going to get more than 60 points. Nothing. So 
under 67 and a half, which is probably best. They're going for the Berard or Michkov sweepstakes, and they'll probably get it. I mean, unless they really, really get unlucky. But even then, it's like Fantilli at number three is like a Tabaras type guy. So they can't go wrong by being horrible this year in that way. Uh, next, I know that's hard for Chicago fans to hear. In fact, when I looked, when I talked to fans in the comment section, I think out of all the fans, the fans that hate the concept of rebuild more than anyone is, is Chicago. They hate it. They literally will not go to the rink. They won't go to the rink. Uh, Colorado Avalanche. And uh, the over-under is 111 and a half. Last year it opened at 110. And this is going to seem odd, but I'm actually going to go the under here. This division just got way better. And I think Colorado this year is going to learn – or is going to kind of pace themselves throughout the year, much like Tampa Bay has done. I mean, you have like to be a, a dynasty, you kind of have to. You can't just go like balls out every single game. And there's going to be certain times when they play a perimeter game. I actually saw it last year, every once in a while against teams like Arizona and stuff like that, where they basically played so they didn't get hurt and hopefully they could grab some points. Uh, and that's Tampa Bay does that all the time. I have a terrible time picking Tampa Bay. Uh, I have the last couple of years. I basically fade them because you never know when they're going to turn it on. And I think Colorado could end up doing that as well. Um, I don't think they care about the president's trophy. So I could just see this being under, not to mention, I got to see, I got to really see Alexander Gorgiev be a good goaltender because so far I just haven't seen it. Like, really, I've seen spottiness of it, but last year was horrible. Now, I imagine Joe Sackick and everybody, uh, Joe Sackick and his staff think that they're going to be able to get the best out of this guy, and maybe they will. I mean, I'm definitely, there's certain general managers where you give the benefit of the doubt to, and Joe Sackick is one of them, no doubt about it. As far as losing Kadri is concerned, I'm not, I'm concerned. There's a, a concern, but not a terrible concern, to tell you the honest truth. I think Alex Newhook is going to be freaking awesome. And I'm actually really surprised how much Colorado fans are underestimating or uh, under, I guess it's just because it's hard to see a guy like Kadri go. But I think Alex Newhook could be every bit as good as what Kadri was throughout his career. And he could start, and I think it could start sort of last like next year. In fact, if you look at Kadri's trajectory, uh, at the same age as Newhook, he had less points. And the very at this age, at 22 years old, Kadri went and had a, almost a point a game season in Toronto. And I could definitely see Newhook doing the same, getting the ice time that he's likely going to get in this spot. That all being said, <clears throat> I'm still going to go to the under. I'm probably not going to give it as a bet, but I'm going to go to the under. Comment in the comment section, Colorado fans. Tell me what you think. All right. Columbus Blue Jackets. Over under 79 and a half. They finished with 81. And the immediate thing you're going to say is, well, they got Goudreau. So, I mean, they're definitely going to be better than last year. I don't think so. And it's not because the team isn't better. It's just all so many teams in the East have gotten so much better. Um, it's possible. I I love Igor Shinnikov. I think he's going to be a really good uh, player in the future. Of course, Cole Sillinger had a full year last year. Does he have a sophomore slump, though? Can Boone Jenner stay healthy? Jack Roslovich started going well in the second half, but he's had consistency issues throughout his whole career. Um, you know, there's still a lot of question marks in this on in this roster. I think Goudreau and Lyon will carry them quite a bit, but you know, Pittsburgh looks like they're pretty solid, uh, and uh, all those teams out in with in uh, the other divisions. Uh, like Buffalo, Detroit, you still got to play those teams. And they're not going to be easy outs anymore. New Jersey got better. 
Uh, this is going to be a tough year for everybody in the East. This is not the same as last year where you had a lot of easy outs. And I think Columbus is on the right traje trajectory and eventually they're going to be good, but I'm going under here. And I know that's difficult for Columbus Blue Jackets to hear because you're like, wow, well, Lion A was hurt most of the year last year. And, uh, you know, we didn't have Johnny Goudreau. And all of those are very valid points. I just think that the East itself has gotten so strong that they're going to be right around this number again. So, and maybe even a little bit under. I, I hope I'm wrong because I love, like, I want to see Columbus succeed there big time. I mean, fans have been waiting for this team to get good. But there's a lot to look up about, and uh, like I said, I definitely could be wrong here. I probably won't be putting this in for a pick for my clients. So comment in the comment section, Columbus fans. Tell me what you think. All right, uh, next, Dallas Stars. And uh, 92, over under 92.5. Opened at 95 and a half last year, finished with 98. Such a tough one because I like the pickup of Mason Marchman, no doubt about that. However, I'm afraid Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan are never going to get it turned around. Uh, but that being said, Robertson and Hints will likely just keep on going upwards. So that could make up for that. Uh, Joe Pavelski just never ages. And, of course, you have Jake Ottinger, who they signed up. And he had a great year last year, went off in the playoffs. And this could be the year that he completely takes off and they get a lot more wins. They're going to be playing more offensive. Um, but the whole, thing, the whole thing is not everybody in the division got a lot better here. I think they're going to be able to, to – to, uh, get a lot of points off of Arizona, Chicago, all of these teams will be that we're talking about here. So I'm going to go slightly to the over. They could, I think they could have more points and actually end up missing the playoffs still. So I'm going to go slightly to the over for the Dallas Stars. Tell me what you think, Dallas Stars fans. Over, under, 92 and a half. Detroit Red Wings. And... Over under 84 for uh, last year they opened at 77 and a half. So this is a 10 point increase for the Detroit Red Wings in what is an extremely difficult div division. I can tell you this right now. I won't be giving this to my clients at bpalpicks.com um, because this team could definitely go over that 84 and a half trajectory points. No doubt about that. With uh, Lucas Raymond has only got, what, 57 points last year as a 20-year-old, as a kid. Uh, I think Larkin could have his best year ever playing on this line uh, now that they have Andrew Kopp there as a second-line center. So they have two solid top six lines and uh, also bringing in Kubali. The thing that I do have a difficult time with here is overall their bottom nine is not spectacular as far as being a two-way line. And I think that is kind of was the problem last year as far as a, a goals being allowed. Also, uh, I got to see it from Ben Chirot to tell you the honest truth. I'm actually surprised that Stevie Y went out and got Ben Chirot. He, as far as I know, is a heavily analytics-driven general manager, and Ben Trott's analytics are not good. He's not good defensively. A lot of people, oh, you know, he's a. They see big. They see six foot three, two thirty four. Oh, this is a defensive defenseman. Not really. He 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 hits yes, but he puts himself out of position a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I I mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. I think actually Ben Trott could learn more from Maurice Sider than vice versa. Uh, <laughs> Um, Maurice Sider is, is, is sublime defensively already at 21 years old. He's absolutely amazing positionally. He never overhits. 
He never puts himself at a position to make a hit. He he doesn't have to block shots all that much because he's so good defensively getting the puck out that he doesn't put himself in a position where he has to block shots as much. Uh, ben Chirot is the opposite of that. He quite often is over-aggressive in the defensive zone, ends up having to scramble back and block shots, and everybody's like, oh, he's a great shot blocker. No, it's not that difficult to block shots, to tell you the honest truth. I played the game. It's not a super skill, really. Um, but the you don't want to have to block shots. See what I'm saying? The less you have to block shots, the better. Because it means you're in control of the puck. So Maureen Sider is amazing at that. Ole Mata is another one. I'm a little bit surprised. He did play better defensively. But I don't see this defense overall being all that much better than last year. Really. And Les Ben Chirot can, do, can really change his game around. Ole Mata is, eh, he's okay. I think Philip Peronik will be better and Maury Sider will be better. And uh, we'll see what Gustav Lindstrom is going to be. But I still think that they could have problems getting keeping the puck out of the net. And with Ville Husso, it's a shot in the dark here. He had one good year. Nedeljkovic I never was really a fan of. So saying all of this, what am I going to go with? Uh, I, I, I think I'm going under 84. It's tough, but I think I'm going under. I won't be giving that to clients on BPAL picks, though. Uh, the next one is fairly easy for me. Edmonton Oilers, the over-under is 102.5. Last year it opened at 97, and they finished with 104. Quite simply, and uh, the Oilers are my team, but I am usually, I, I, his, the past five years, I have not been kind to my own team. I'll tell you that right now. I didn't like what they, the moves that they've made in a lot of ways. And, but this year, I'm going well over. I, I, lo- I, I love the fact that they, they, we lost Cassian and, um, <clears throat> I love the moves that they made. I like Matthias Janmark. I think he's a great pickup. Keeping Jesse Pulley Harvey. Thank you. Best two way guy on this team. Um, getting getting Brett Kulak back. I love Barry going down in the bottom pairing. I love. Hopefully Bouchard getting more power play time. I love. I still don't. I the defense still concerns me, but. With Jack Campbell back there, that's a question mark as far as I'm concerned. Um, he just hasn't been able to show consistency his whole career. When he's hot, he's freaking crazy hot, and the Oilers will win a crap load. When he's not, it could be a struggle. I mean, he really can struggle when he's not. So it's getting that uh, consistency with Jack Campbell. If they find that, they go over easy. Even if he doesn't, I still see this team being over. I did, in the in the regular season, it's you saw with the Florida Panthers last year. You can outscore teams. The question is, will they be able to do the same thing in the playoffs? Um, it's a different kind of game, as we all know. But I'm staying over. Tell me what you think, Edmonton Oilers fans, over or under on that? Uh, Florida Panthers and hard to beat last year. They finished with 102. But look at what they've done here. They've set the number for 105 and a half points for the Florida Panthers. Um, and I kind of get it. I think they will drop because losing Uyghur was huge. Like, I really don't think this team was prepared to lose a guy like Uyghur. Mark Stahl, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You don't want him in your top four. I'm really, I'm thinking that they think Lucas Carlson's going to have a huge step up this year. They have to, because that, after Ekblad Forsling probably shouldn't be playing top pair. Um, it's tough. And then, of course, you have the question mark about Sergei Bobrovsky. But that all being said, this top 12, it might be the best in the league. And I'm including Colorado in this. Kachuk, Barkoff, Reinhardt, for my money, is the best shut will be the best shutdown scoring line in the league. 
Like, Kachuk and Barkov are elite two-way forwards. And, of course, the compete that, Ch- that Kachuk's going to bring to this team is going to be insane. They they will eventually have cap space to add to this team. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go over the 105 and a half. Um, I, I think Lundell will take out Sam Bennett. And uh, Sam Bennett will move down to the third line. And that line already is cray-cray. Verhage and Lundell and uh, whoever you want to put on that right side. Uh, so, and, and then you have Lomberg, Bennett, and White, and Cousins, Lausterinen. Uh, he's fantastic. Balzers was a wonderful pickup. Team depth there is insane, and I think that'll make up for the for the defense for a while because they are a great two two way forward team, much like Colorado was that won the cup last year. So I'm going over 105 and a half. I'm going to say that Bob Roski has a another year like last year, and that Spencer Knight at 22 just keeps on putting it together and getting better and better, and they're okay. Tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans, about that. All right. L.A. Kings. And 96 and a half. They finished with 69 last year. And quite simply, I just can't go under on this, even though it's going to be difficult. But there's a lot of players that could step up here. And I think out of all the players that can step up, some of them are bound to. Artur Kaliev, he could just go off. Um, he could take Victor Arvidsson's spot this year. He should take Victor Arvidsson's spot this year. Uh, Quinn Byfield, of course, he's only 20 years old. I think people are going to be a little disappointed on his trajectory up, but I still think he'll have a better year than last year, and he'll keep on improving. No doubt about that. A full year of uh, Drew Doughty is certainly going to help. And uh, Sean Dursey, I think, is just going to get better and better and better. I did a uh, vid- video on breakout players, and Dursey was my breakout player for L.A., but there's tons of players like that here. And going by how well they did last year, adding Kevin Fiala, um, I think they're going to be able to compete with everything that uh, – I-, I think they're going to be better than Calgary. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going over. Tell me what you think, L.A. fans. The biggest question mark I have here is, will Quick and Peterson be able to get it done? And that is a bit of a question mark. But I'm going to bank that they're good enough to be able to do that. Next and finally, the Minnesota Wild. We'll do the rest in my next video, so be looking out for that. And over under 99 and a half, they had 113 points last season. And now they are going into a season where they have Marc-Andre Fleury as their number one goaltender this year. And the question, I I will never sell short Marc-Andre Fleury, period. Until I see it, and I didn't see it last year. I know his numbers weren't great in Chicago, but it was actually pretty phenomenal. He kept his save percentage above nine. And goals against average under three on that team. That team was so bad. And I know he struggled when he came in to Minnesota a little bit. Which, it seems Marc-Andre Fleury always t- it takes him some time to get used to the defense in front of him. And he's going to have all the time to do it this year. And I imagine he's going to crush it. So, um, as far as additions, uh, the loss of Fiala will hurt to a certain degree. But I don't think too terribly bad. Because Matthew Boldy's going to have a full year, and I honestly don't see him uh, having a shut, having a breakdown. I think he's just going to keep on going up and up and up. That was an amazing pick by Minnesota, and I think he could knock out uh, Zuccarello this year. I think they could he could take minutes from Zuccarello this year. Uh, the top line Kaprizov's not what twenty five years old. You think he's going to get less? Better? No, he's going to be fantastic. The only real big issue is can Ryan Hartman keep going? But all this being said, I think this team stays on a higher trajectory and will go over the total given in 
the next year's for next year. What do you guys think? Over or under Minnesota fans or any fans, comment in the comment section. That's my full 42. I'll be doing the rest next time on the Perlo Wisdom Show. <laughs> Took me a while to find the button. Okay, bye.